Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 VC review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at East Book 1 and 2, which if you've never played it before, it's basically an RPG, but it's probably unlike any RPG you've ever played. At the start you get beginning and continue. I'm going to go on to continue simply because while you can skip the cutscenes and stuff, there's some stuff that you can't skip, which is just basically talking to people. So I'm going to go on to a well, one of the games here where I've actually bought the sword and shield and everything because you don't get one to begin with and I've bought that stuff so I can just go around and show you it. The whole point is you have to walk around villages and stuff, finding a way to get other villages talking to people, doing a few side quests, but unfortunately I'm just a little disappointed in the game because everything's far too easy. The combat is quite simply like you walk into people and that's it and when you get a powerful enough sword you only need to walk into them one time and it kills them. But it's the type of thing that if you stop walking and think, well, can I take them out if I stop walking, they'll absolutely slaughter you. So you've got to constantly be walking. So if you slip off the D-pad in a boss battle or something, then you're done for. Because even the bosses, you just walk. So it's a bit of a disappointment on that. The, uh, the game's just far too easy, unfortunately, as well, which is a bit of a shame because... The only time you'll ever have a bit of problem is when you're actually doing the boss battles and even then it's only because you're having to figure out what's the best way to go about it. Where one of them is actually to circle them, just to literally go up in a circle like that. So that's basically one of the things and while that might be a bit of a spoiler, you don't know which boss it is. So you might try it on the other bosses and end up dying. So ha. Um, the whole point though is you go on through the first game, which this is uh, East Book 1, I will show you footage of the second one. There's a handful of swords, a handful of shields, there's very little actual customization options going on and w with the exception of actually adding a sword and, your sh and a shield to your appearance, they don't actually change your appearance or anything. So that's a bit of a shame. It's uh, the type of thing that Newtopia does, but this doesn't, which uh, as I say, a bit of a shame there. But uh, the way the game just kind of like holds your hand, it always tells you where to go. And granted, while you don't know where that is because you don't have a map or anything, the side quests all seem to be doable in while you're doing the main quests. You'll go to the shrine, which is uh, just where I'm at here, and do, going through the first shrine, you'll find the items you need to complete a few of the side quests. So it's uh, it's just a real shame how the game's worked. But uh, I'm going to cut to another footage now. I'm just basically going to load one up simply because I should have saved a boss battle, and uh, this is indeed it. This is basically the first boss you'll come up against in the game. You've got to avoid the fire and try and kill the guy. So probably your best tactic is to just stand still and wait for them to appear in front of you like that. And then as I say, you just walk into them. You level up by getting experience, you get experience by killing the enemies. You also get gold, but the gold is pretty much pointless. Because after you've bought the best sword and the best shield, then that's it, that's all you need to buy. The uh, potions that you can buy, you don't actually need to buy one, you get one. And if you're anything like me, you won't actually need to use it for a very, very long time. Pretty much near the end of the game. Another reason, that another thing of me just basically seeing how easy the game is, which again is a bit of a disappointment. It is a fun game to play, and I did enjoy going through it. It's just one of them that when there's so many other great games out there, it, I can't really see it rush out and buy it. It's more of a really dear game if you've got 800 points to spare. Especially because when you actually beat the end boss of East 1, you lose all of your gold, and while you keep your experience, you don't gain any from beating him. So it's the type of thing of why bother doing that? Why didn't they just actually separate the games and make East 1 and East 2 rather than the only way to get to East 2 is to beat East 1 and then that's happened. It's just uh, it's just one of them things where the game's riddled with loads of things that you just wonder why they didn't do it a different way. But uh, there, there is one good thing about the game, one amazing thing, it's the music. It's I personally think it's fantastic so I'm going to shut up while I try and concentrate on killing this guy and let you have a listen, little listen to it. So there we go, that was a bit of the music. 
Um, unfortunately, the only other thing I haven't mentioned here is that that you might have just noticed there, and if not, I'll go and get injured again. The, one of the things that makes it easier is there are places where you can just stand and you'll get healed for no reason, you'll just slowly heal and again it's just one of them things that makes the game so much easier than it could have been. You can even at some point get a magic ring that allows you to heal so then you can heal anywhere rather than just in certain places. But as I say that is East Book 1, Book 2 I personally think is much better. They did change a lot of things, they actually added magic so that you could actually do something now instead of just well, instead of just having to walk into the enemies, you can now fire at them with magic, so pretty damn cool there. Unfortunately, I've obviously saved in the middle of a battle. But uh, anyway, this is East 2, so this is the magic you've got. It's basically the fire magic. It's very similar to the fire mod that you get on Utopia. And unfortunately, that is the only actual attacking magic that you get. The other magics you can get, because there's six of them overall, are just things like shield, which basically turns your magic power into hit points. Like, it's kind of a thing like that. You can get transport, which basically teleports you to loads of different places, like to d any of the different villages you've been to. You can um, get a, tra uh, a transform as well, which basically turns you into a demon, so you can talk to other demons. So that's pretty much the magic in the game, and there's a few more as I say, but I don't want to tell you everything, because they'll probably end up just disappointing you with what they actually do. For example, what the light magic does in the end. Uh, anyway. As I say though, pretty much the only thing the game's majorly got going for that I would admit is absolutely phenomenal is simply the music, the soundtrack. The uh, voice acting's pretty cool simply because it's done by a load of actual, well, not famous people, but basically if you grew up with 80s cartoons and stuff and 70s cartoons, they've got the voice of Skeletor in there, they've got the voice of G.I. Joe, so that's just a pretty damn cool thing about it. So uh, that's pretty much the review though. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. This has been Damon212, signing off.